Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing, where today we are going to be continuing to read The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. So, let's get going. Colin was delighted and so was Mary. Fired by recollections of fakirs and devotees in illustrations, Colin suggested that they should all sit cross-legged under the tree which made a canopy. It will be like sitting in a sort of temple, said Colin. I'm rather tired and I want to sit down. Eh, hey, said Dickon, I mustn't begin by saying they're tired. They might spoil magic. Colin turned and looked at him, into his innocent round eyes. That's true, he said slowly. I must only think of the magic. It all seemed most majestic and mysterious when they sat down in their circle. Ben Weatherstaff felt as if he had somehow been led into appearing at a prayer meeting. Ordinarily he was very fixed in being what he called uh, again prayer meetings. But this being the Raja's affair, he did not resent it, and was indeed inclined to be gratified at being called upon to assist. Mistress Mary felt solemnly enraptured. Dickon held his rabbit in his arm and perhaps he made some charmer's signal no one heard. For when he sat down, cross-legged like the rest, the crow, the fox, the squirrels and the lamb slowly drew near and made part of the circle, settling each into a place of rest as if, the, if, they're, as if of their own desire. The creatures have come, said Colin gravely. They want to help us. Colin really looked quite beautiful, Mary thought. He held his head high as, it, as if he felt like a sort of priest, and his strange eyes had a wonderful look in them. The light shone on him through the tree canopy. Now we will begin, he said. Shall we sway backward and forward, Mary, as if we were dervishes? I cannot do no swaying backward and forward, said Ben Weatherstaff. I've got the rheumatics. The magic will take them away, said Colin in a high priest tone, but we won't sway until it has done it. We will only chant. I canna do no chanting, said Ben Weatherstaff, a trifle testily. They turned me out of the church choir the only time I ever tried it. No one smiled. They were all too much in earnest. Colin's face was not even crossed by a shadow. He was thinking only of the magic. Then I will chant, he said, and he began, looking like a strange boy spirit. The sun is shining, the sun is shining. That is the magic. The flowers are growing, the roots are stirring. That is the magic. Being alive is the magic, being strong is the magic. The magic is in me, the magic is in me. It is in me, it is in me. It's in every one of us. It's in Ben Weatherstaff's back, magic magic come and help he said it a great many times not a thousand times but quite a goodly number mary listened entranced she felt as if it were at once queer and beautiful and she wanted him to go on and on ben weatherstaff began to feel soothed into a sort of dream which was quite agreeable the humming of the bees in the blossoms mingled with the chanting voice and drowsily melted into a doze Dickon sat cross-legged with his rabbit, asleep on his arm, and a hand resting on the lamb's back. Soot had pushed away a squirrel, and huddled close to him on his shoulder. The grey film dropped over his eyes. At last Colin stopped. Now I am going to walk round the garden, he announced. Ben Weatherstaff's head had just dropped forward, and he lifted it with a jerk. You have been asleep, said Colin. No such sort, mumbled Ben. The sermon was good enough, but I'm bound to get out a for collection. He was not quite awake yet. You're not in church, said Colin. Not me, said Ben, straightening himself. You said I were. I heard every bit of it. You said the magic was in me back. The doctor calls it rheumatics. The Raja waved his hand. That was the wrong magic, he said. You will get better. You have my permission to go to your work, but come back tomorrow. 
I'd like to see thee walk round the garden, grunted Ben. It was not an unfriendly grunt, but it was a grunt. In fact, being a stubborn old party and not having entire faith in magic, he had made up his mind that if he were sent away, he would climb his ladder and look over the wall, so that he might be ready to hobble back if there were any stumbling. The Raja did not object to his staying, and so the procession was formed. It really did look like a procession. Colin was at its head with Dickon on one side and Mary on the other. Ben Weatherstaff walked behind, and the creatures trailed after them. The lamb and the fox cub, keeping close to Dickon, the white rabbit hopping along or stopping to nibble, and Soot following with the solemnity of a person who felt himself in charge. It was a procession which moved slowly but with dignity. Every few yards it stopped to rest. Colin leaned on Dickon's arm, and privately Ben Weatherstaff kept a sharp lookout. But now and then Colin took his hand from its support and walked a few steps alone. His head was held up all the time, and he looked very grand. The magic is in me, he kept saying. The magic is making me strong. I can feel it. I can feel it. It seemed very certain that something was upholding and uplifting him. He sat on the seats in the alcoves, and once or twice he sat down on the grass, and several times he paused in the path and leaned on Dickon, but he would not give up until he had gone all round the garden. When he returned to the canopy tree, his cheeks were flushed, and he looked triumphant. I did it. The magic worked, he cried. That is my first scientific discovery. What will Dr. Craven say? broke out Mary. He won't say anything, Colin answered, because he will not be told. This is to be the biggest secret of all. No one is to know anything about it until I have grown so strong that I can walk and run like any other boy. I shall come here every day in my chair, and I shall be taken back in it. I won't have people whispering and asking questions, and I won't let my father hear about it until the experiment has quite succeeded. Then some time when he comes back to Misselthwaite, I shall just walk into his study and say, Here I am. I am like any other boy. I am quite well and I shall live to be a man. It has been done by a scientific experiment. He will think he is in a dream, cried Mary. He won't believe his eyes. Colin flushed triumphantly. He had made himself believe that he was going to get well, which was really more than half the battle, if he had been aware of it. And the thought which stimulated him more than any other was this imagining what his father would look like when he saw that he had a son who was as straight and strong as other father's sons. One of his darkest miseries in the unhealthy morbid past days had been his hatred of being a sickly weak-backed boy whose father was afraid to look at him. He'll be obliged to believe them, he said. One of the things I am going to do after the magic works, and before I begin to make scientific discoveries, is to be an athlete. We shall have the take into boxing in a week or so, said Ben Weatherstaff. Thou'll end we winning belt and being champion prize fighter of all England. Colin fixed his eyes on him sternly. Weatherstaff, he said, that is disrespectful. You must not take liber liberties because you are in the secret. However much the magic works, I shall not be a prize fighter. I shall be a scientific discoverer. Ax pardon, ax pardon, sir, answered Ben, touching his forehead in salute. I ought to have seen it was a joking, it wasn't a joking matter. But his eyes twinkled and secretly he was immensely pleased. He really did not mind being snubbed, since the snubbing meant that the lad was gaining strength and spirit. Oh, that's actually a really good time to stop. I was going to go to the end of the next page, but as it happens, it's the end of the chapter, so I'm kind of glad I didn't um, stop at the end of that page. But, yeah, anyway, that kind of worked out. So, yeah. It's going to be a very quick end to the book actually because we are in with into the last hundred pages but anyway i'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today um 
And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night, no matter what time of day it is. I hope you have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we will be back tomorrow for more of The Longing. Goodbye.